Hi, and welcome to Easy Fishing. Well, I've been desperate to get out for the last nearly three weeks and it's rained every single day. Uh, it rained this morning, but we've had a few breaks in the sunshine, in the clouds. So I decided to grab some minimal tackle and come down a local stream. Now this little uh, stream I'm on today is the uh, upper reaches of a tributary of the uh, Great Ooze further downstream. Um, it's barely 10 foot wide in places and the summer weed growth has encroached badly on it. Um, I did think the floods we had might have uprooted some of it but it doesn't appear to have done so. Right, so today I'm just going to be fishing a, a four metre whip. Uh, I've got a small pole float, a 0.5 of a gram Drenum margin crystal. Now, that's probably not what people would imagine is a good for a whip, but it's great on these shallow waters because here I've got two, two, not even two and a half feet of depth. And I've shotted it with a slightly strung bulk of number eights and a couple of number tens. Got a size 18 Drennan carbon match on and bait wise I have some ground bait, a very small quantity, uh, some casters and about a quarter of a pint of maggots and a few worms. So let's just crack on. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to feed a couple of balls of ground bait. Now when you're doing this on flowing rivers with dace, it's essential to feed slightly downstream of yourself and with any fish on running water. Because if you throw it in front of you, they will come up. So I like to throw it a bit down and then run my float across. Now with a four metre whip, I can get a fair run down and I'm using a, a telly take apart so I can add a, another uh, exception or more on should I need it. Right, let's get this out there. Let's just bung a section on while I just lay it in the river and get some ground bait out and uh, get going. Right. So I'm baiting, I'm starting off with a single caster on a, uh, on the hook. I'm just going to flick that out in front of me, let the rig straighten. Add a section on and let it run. I might be better off with maggots as bait at first, but we'll have to uh, wait and see on that. There's more current than I thought as well. I might even have to resort to ledgering if I uh, can't uh, get a response on a moving bait. Just had a little dip so there's obviously fish there. But uh, a swirling wind is not making this easy. I'll just do the best I can. If conditions get so bad, I'll switch to a, a light link ledger or a tiny, tiny feeder. But as with most anglers, I do prefer watching float. And I'll give this another run or so down and then I'll change to a maggot on the hook. Oh. First bite, and I missed it. Right, let's just change this to a maggot. Ooh, overhanging trees and a gusty wind. And not a great combination. I've only got about a quarter of a pint of maggots. I bought a like what they would call a child's amount because I'm not going to be feeding them just uh, 
using them on the hook. And I'll have red and white mixed. Which gives me a uh, few options. So I can fish single red, single white, double white, double red, red and white. Because you will often find the fish will show a distinct uh, preference on the day. Right, let's just drop this in. Let it run down. Just touching bottom. Only just. I might take half an inch off and make sure it just misses the bottom. But the bottom's never dead level on a river or a lake. Pastors fed down the swim. I think I might need to take half an inch off the depth. Getting on little fast bites, which might well be dace. Yes. And what have I got? I would guess it's a small dace, but it's a fish. Oh yes, just a tiny, tiny little dace. But because I've not been fishing for a while, um, I just needed to get out and catch something. Wet a line, as the saying is. Um, and I don't really care if I don't catch much. Regular viewers will know my philosophies on fishing. It's just good to be out. Uh, let's uh, carry on running down. I've just taken about half an inch or three quarters of an inch off the depth. Sorry for newer, younger viewers, uh, less than two centimetres, I would say. The wind is making presentation somewhat problematical. getting bites but they are I'm not sure if these are just lightning fast dace bites or um, minnows But whatever, I'm content now. I'm actually sat, well, perched uncomfortably, but I'm sat by the a river with a rod in my hand. Got a feeling I might have got a shoal of minnows or very uh, small fish in my swim, but if I keep feeding it, I'm sure some better quality dace will show up. And there are some 
very good quality dace and roach in this small stream. Another very small fish. But like I say, it's a fish. And oh, an even more minute dace. A beautiful fish. All of them. Actually, I tell a lie. This is an absolute minute chub. <laughs> a beautiful little fish. Try just a single red at the moment. Yeah, I just grabbed this whip and a small lead rod. I don't know which would be more effective today, but we shall see. Like I say, to me, today is just about getting out of the house. Slightly but not much better. Oh, is this a gudgeon? Hey! Oh, yes. Well, I'll take gudgeon. May not be the most glamorous fish, but uh, they've given me a lot of uh, fun over the years, and they make great uh, live and dead baits for predator fish as well. Yes, getting a lot of bites from small fish, I think. Yeah, I'm just hoping the bigger fish will put in an appearance. Just trying to hold it back a bit now. Difficult in this gusty wind, and it would be impossible with a rod. But with a whip, as long as I maintain a tight line between the whip and the float, I can get pretty good control. This time I'm going to add a couple of sections on. I'll start off at the same length and then I'll just uh, feed the sections out through my hand as it goes down the street. One of the advantages of a... <laughs> what have we got this time? <laughs> Another gudgeon. You've got to love gudgeon. A lot of people despise them because they're a small fish, but uh, I can't go along with that. I love gudgeon. Had some very hard days when I've been glad of a gudgeon. And if everybody's honest, I expect I'm not the only one. Right, let's just run this down.
not as comfortable as sitting on a, a proper seat box, but it's a fair walk down the river, so. Um, I didn't want to uh, encumber myself too much. I'll just swivel sideways on the chair and uh, follow this down with the pole. Yes, another very small fish. Well, like I say, when you've been stuck in the house for three weeks, any fish is good. Oh, another tiny little chub. What I want to see is one of the bigger chub that I know inhabit this uh, waterway. Now I'm not sure how big the chub go uh, to about getting on to four or five pounds which should I hook one on a, a whip will be fun. Um, I may get lucky and get it out but it's more than equal to uh, fish of a couple of pounds. So whatever, I'll just carry on running this float through for a while. See a pike angler's spinner or spoon of some sort hanging from the tree. Well, he's obviously tried to get a bit ambitious and get under the tree. See now this, at seven meters now, I can get it right down my swim and search the swim. Oh, and I've caught yet another tiny fish. I think today won't be that long before I uh, switch. That fish was so small it fell off. Yes, just nip the end off the maggot. Before I chuck in this time, to add another small ball of ground bait and casters. Basically, it, when these take apart whips are like fishing a short pole, makes them very, very versatile. Um, if you can afford one, they certainly are good fun and very, very effective. And this is an ancient one. But it's still a very good one. As I said in my review on them, this is the model that really uh, set the benchmark for these long whips. Don't remember seeing one before Daiwa came out with theirs. There might have been, but but up to about seven metres, I can handle this all day long. Right, now, because I've got a bit more length, there's a bit of slack water on the other bank. Just going to pop the float in there and see if there's uh, anything residing there just off the main flow. So you can fish. This th in this sort of situation, this gives you a huge advantage. You can fish it like a short pole. You can eat you can run it down like you were using a rod and reel. Getting all the indications over there, that, but they're probably just minute fish. Yeah. Tiny minnows all day. And that might all be that's on the menu today. It might not be any bigger fish about. But, um... These, I must admit, and I've seen minnows bigger than this. But there we go. Let's just try running it down the inside of the swim. I mean, these fish are minute. And this one is a minute dace. Yeah. 
Yes, all I can catch is um, very small fish. But, uh, mm. I've strung out the shop more and uh, I've taken the float down the line by another half an inch. I've caught quite a lot of these um, minute little fish, but that's not what I want. I want to catch some of the better quality dace and that in here, but today they might just not be feeding, and that's one of the things about fishing you have to accept. Well, this is the biggest fish of the day so far. And uh, when you see the size of it, it's not saying a lot. But there we have <laughs> a beautiful little uh, scale perfect roach. So I'm pleased at that. So, possibly, maybe, there are some better fish in the swim just keep persisting for a while longer I think I probably would have done better with bread on a cage feeder but I didn't have that option so. <laughs> <laughs>